This is the book of um Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter um fifteen. I'm gonna read from fourteen on down. Point is verse sixteen. Second Ezra fifteen and fourteen and it reads Woe Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and the destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings, nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able, because of, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. I'm going to start off by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory to God. Loyim, by Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem. I'm going to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim, across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith. And with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and the freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwath, as well as the Akim out here listening and learning. Um, Lord willing, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Um, this, this is the brother Yahweh Sapa the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant coming at you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shah. Coming at you through the spirit of Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah. And with another lesson, um, Lord willingly is edifying. And um, I came across a, another article, and <laughs> you know, it's spiritual because for whatever reason, Spirit been leading me the articles about judgment and a lot of violence. Um, brother, whose page is, I believe, GMS Keep Pushing, you know, he's one of the brothers that um, do a lot of posts, and he was posting about certain situations going on in the world. You know, it's just a, a lot of violence. And, um, just showing you the times we in. In the book of Matthew, they talk about iniquity and shit. Because of the iniquity, meaning the sin upon sin shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People won't get in a cold, cold spirit. And, um, you know, when you go into Micah, well, we brought this out at camp earlier because um, through the spirit, we, we started off with Second Ezra, I mean, it's like a Second Timothy chapter 3 about the last days. The brothers, basically, before we got started, he's speaking about we are living in the last days. The spirit moved me to bring out um, second Timothy chapter three, cause it starts off about the last days and it goes into, um, you know, painting a picture of how the last days would appear or look like. And what's so powerful about that, um, chapter and those verses, cause I believe it goes from one to five It names all these things that these people, these Babylonians have in their spirit, you know, they're vain, they're proud, you know, um, you know, disobedient, um, unholy because when you go into holy is to be separate but they're unholy so they joined on to the wickedness of this place and what kept on harping on my mind is that pride you know and because of that pride that's why um this place is going to be judged so greatly you know and when you go into proverbs chapter 16 it talks about um um pride coming before destruction so um this is second ezra chapter 8 verse 50 for many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. You know, we live in a land where, you know, especially two thirds of our people have come under the impression that because of, you know, they, Esau has brainwashed them in this the attempt to believe that the more money you have, the more you will be treated as equal or above the rest of these Babylonians when that's not the case. You know, you have a lot of, um, of our people that die broke, you know, I mean, trying to live in that love luxurious lifestyle you know i've seen um movies and, and, and i forgot who actually made the statement but basically they said they wish they would never become rich because you know you know i was just listening to the guy the baby you know um not to digress but i was just listening to him because um i had another car and lord blessed me with another one now and um long story short i a brother had blessed me with some cds because it had a you know a cd changer in it so the brother best me gave me all these CDs, so I kept them, never you know expecting to use them again. And then just so happened I got this car, which is with a CD player. So I was playing it, and I never really paid attention to him. You know I've heard his music, but I really don't. You know a lot of his new music I really don't 
you know, jig with. But I mean, I will say this. I mean, some things he say, you know, but he a, he a super nigga. Long story short, though, I didn't know that first album. He said his father died right before he blew up. And I was just, you know, <laughs> thinking about, you know, you know, how the society is set up. You know, what I mean, um, our people think that by getting money that that actually excludes them from this judgment that's coming. You know, they're not. But, you know, look at look like, for instance, right now you got more billionaires that's, you know, you got people like Kim Kardashian that's a billionaire based off of nothing. Off of makeup, some vain shit like that. When we come into a, a time where, you know, <laughs> you know, it's go, it's, it's what? How do that scripture go? Uh, a woman gonna smell like rot or smell like stink? You know, I think that's Isaiah chapter three. So you know, we gonna come in a time. You know, uh, I was just listening to that guy David Williams. He was talking about how, um, you know, what's going on in um, Europe and Germany and whatnot with those the natural gas is about to be happening here this year. We all gonna be affected, but may Yahabashim Yahshah sustain his elect, you know. And, and it's so spiritual, you know. You try to move, like I, I noticed this walking the truth. You try to set up certain because you know, you'd be a dummy just to sit back if you see something and you think you could do move things um carnally. Because I mean, like, if you that's just like if you're driving down the street and you see a car coming towards you, you're gonna move out the way. A punch, uh, you know, what I mean? a knife, you know, what I mean? you know, you would think, right? So, but then when the Lord wants you really to go do something, it don't matter how much you do something, it's still gonna play out the way the Lord wants it. So, saying all that to say this, um, so lucky like for the digression, you know, in my little rant, but you know, because of the pride of this place, this place is gonna get judged horrifically, and you know, anybody can get it. So much so that um, that's what this article is going into. You know, basically, it says violent week of um, grim. Salakia. Let me pause this. Okay, so it reads violent week, a grim sign as targeted killings of police rise. Seattle, the shooting deaths of two Connecticut officers and a wounding of a third punctuated an especially violent week for police across the U.S. and fit into a grim pattern, even as more officers left their jobs in the past two weeks. The numbers targeted and killed rose. According to organizations that track violence against police, 56 officers have been killed by gunfire this year, 14% more than the time, 14% more than this time last year, and about 45% ahead of 2020's pace. The country is on a track for the deadliest year since 67 officers were killed in 2016 and that number you know probably 2023 ain't gonna be no probably it's going to surprise that when you go into the i mean if they allow they, they even made the statement um chicago won't be holding prisoners that threaten a public servant that's a police officer that's a prosecutor that's that's these certain these certain these individuals that hold positions in the society in these in these municipalities you know, so anybody could get it to a degree. So, yeah, this shit going to be worse than the Wild Wild West. Because, I mean, Wild Wild West, they didn't really had a, you know, they had Gatling guns, but that was the military. <laughs> you know, they had, you know, I forgot what year the repeating rifle was um, created, but most guns was, you know what I mean? You know, that's what made a cowboy actually, his hand became the machine gun. You know what I mean? He was able to move his, his hand <laughs> that quick. So, you know, just imagine a two-third goofy-ass nigga that's just, you know what I mean, out on the street and allowed to um, just run a amok. And the Lord going to put spirits on these demons to do that. We was just going into that in the camp. You know, uh, Second Ezra chapter 5 about uh, menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. And although, you know, um, those monsters is, is going into, you know, um, you know, those deformed children, you know, these... Uh, two third Jakes are deformed in the mind. You know they don't have any fear of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. You know, um, you, you know, you talking about a generation that is all about me, me, me. You know, I was looking at this one child, and he's always whining or hitting somebody. When you take time to think about that, I was like, you know, that reflect on his father, because I mean, you know, most of the men in this society are uh, emotional. I could be honest, I'm trying to get up out of that. You know what I mean? You know, being honest, you know, uh, you know. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, because you got to examine thyself before you could judge anything. So, you know what I mean? But I was just thinking, like, this dude, your child is emotional. So either, you know, 
And then I watched certain situations with the father, you know what I mean? When you're happy with the female, you know, everything's lovey-dovey, but when she ain't moving the way you want, you want to beat the shit out of her, you know what I mean? You know, or turn it to a kid, you, 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 it affects the child, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, yeah, um, that's why it's, just, I mean, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is bringing manhood back to the earth, you know, um, call lawyer, you know what I mean? Because with these times coming, that's why it talks about that in the book of Isaiah, um, uh, a, a, a man of the Lord should be, um, uh, be, 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 be a covering from the wind, roughly paraphrased. Women going to, the people going to be seeking a man of the Lord, you know. I forgot how the scripture go, like, so my mind a little bit of everywhere. Um, so it reads, um, such an attack apparently struck Wednesday in Bristol, Connecticut, where the state police said Bristol Police Sergeant Dustin De, De, De Monte and Officer Alex Hemsey were killed and officers and officer Alec Loretto was wounded when they responded to a 911 call that appeared to have been a deliberate act to lure law enforcement to the scene. So they letting the law enforcement know, oh yeah, you can get this shit too. And you know, that ain't the first instance where I can see that. That ain't the first because basically it's gonna be these gangs that's gonna be running these cities. You know, these politicians are gonna be like ducked off, and then a lot of officers are already like, you know basically leaving the force you know chicago these places like um seattle you know <laughs> you know <laughs> so it says um at least 11 police officers were shot around the country this week yeah and it was an article that i was going to add to this because it was another shooting in another state but yeah they targeted the police at least 11 police officers were shot around the country this week, including one fatally in Greenville, Mississippi, and another in Las Vegas. Those are really scary numbers for, for law enforcement because it's kind of unprecedented. You know, you know, people can police officers could get killed in the line of duty, but for that many officers, it's like kind of. But I can see it being around the country, though, because when you take time to think about it, you got gangs affiliated with every state. Like you got bloods in my state, even though it originated in West. You know what I mean? But you got bloods all the way to where, you know, they said I think Polite was a, a, a blood or a crip or something like that. And he all the way in the East. So I can see if, if, if it was about to be like a, a riot or like something that these gangs organized enough. They, they want to quench that, you know what I mean? Like if a murder happens in a jail, they lock the jail down. So, they, yeah, they, they they looking at these numbers, like this many police officers getting shot and then deliberately being set up like that, yeah. So it's got these people, like I said, what, like I said especially when, like, when these, um, like, when, when next year kicks in, when it, shit gonna already be hard, you know what I mean? And then you literally got... You know, these police officers, it's one thing when you got order to be that guy toting that badge. You know, this ain't the walking dead. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, when I was, I mean, because I was watching that series. Nah, I never really watched it. But I was like, fuck it. I jumped, jumped in the spirit of, of watching it. And, you know, it made me laugh to a degree because, you know, Rick tried to, like, at the end, like, I think season nine, you know, Rick was trying to basically bring back society in a way where they, putting people in jail and shit like that. And they like, well, we do society ain't like that no more. We changed with the change with it. And he trying to stay true to that. So that was spiritual. But at the end of the day, it, it, you know, America's destroyed. It's not going to be like that. You know what I mean? The way of how this place was done is over with. And that's showing you that just people don't want to believe it. And you know, I mean? even though they see it, it says, um, those are really scary numbers for law enforcement, not just for individual officers, but for the, the organizations they work for, which have to be which have to be taken this into account as they are hiring, retaining and training officers, said Bill Alexander, executive director of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, which tracks officers deaths in the line of duty is not lost on the officers that the job they signed up for has become more dangerous. He said that has to be taken a significant mental toll on the agencies at large and the individuals officers doing the work and right because you got you got to remember like i said they already having trouble bringing hiring officers back um i forgot who went into that i think it was the the elder brother mawatazak from um ancient of days la see he, you know he did 
a video, if I'm not mistaken, it was going into how basically these cities got to try to um, incentivize these people to to basically join the force. So like, you know, you got these hiring bonuses and these sign on bonuses. They got to like double them. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's going to be evil days for sure. So that, with that all being said, uh, you know, maybe you think about um, a few different scriptures. When you go in the book of Genesis, it talks about, um, you know, in the days of Noah, um, it was violence on the earth and being that we come into, you know, a, a, a time like never before the violence that's going to be in this time is going to exceed um, in the days of Noah. This is um, Genesis chapter six, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before Yahweh and the earth was filled with violence, you know, and like I, I brought out, um, I, I just quoted it, you know, Matthew, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And we seeing that. You know, more and more. I know I'm specifically seeing it because, like I said, it seemed like I'm just running head first into these articles that's talking about, you know, something happened to this person or something happened to that person. You know, a brother posted something. He said it was a female basically kidnapped and held into a dog cage for like five days where they beat her with bats. They just kept her alive. Probably did all kind of other horrible shit to her, too. Because just imagine being beat with a bat. You know what I mean? Like the, the brother Bakora Ma brought out the video where the lady was just walking and the dude just ran up behind her and smacked her in the back of her shit with a hammer. A hammer or a bat. You know, like Negan off of the wood. <laughs> and she lived though. And that, you know what I mean? Trust me, when you go through traumatic shit like that, that's when you get that PTSD and shit like that. You know what I mean? You ain't never right the same when a motherfucker, especially blindsided like that. You know, I remember I was speaking on um, a video I see. I did a video on it or a paper or an article I read. And um, I remember the brother Bukar Muff mentioned it, but it, I know it was out east in New York. Basically, a guy was at the ATM and a Jake walked in. He clearly looked like a Jake. And he ain't robbed him or nothing. That's why I said there's a spirit on him. He just came in and, 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 and hit him from the back, blindsided him with a hatchet in his ankle. And, you know, you know, I, I I tried to follow it a little bit because, you know, and they, they was just like he was severely hurt. They didn't say if he died or not, but I'm sure because them first couple swipes, he, he couldn't, you know, when the person getting stabbed or cut at, they usually use their arms to block. So they'll take a cut on their arm or, you know, what I mean, because they'll risk getting cut on the arm as opposed to being stabbed in the stomach or, you know, what I mean, or in the neck or some shit like that. But defensively, where a person hits you with a hatchet three or four times. Yeah, I'm sure he fucked up and cleaving all in the meat and bone. So, yeah, <laughs> you think it like <laughs> made me think of, of Walking Dead because the violence that's in that show, you know, what I mean, it was just spiritual, too. Because, like I said, I never really was. I watched maybe like a couple episodes and then I never really was getting into it when it first came out. And then the spirit just jumped on me like, let me start watching this shit. And, you know what I mean? And <laughs> so, yeah, even got. Uh, my, my 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 Eve into it, and she didn't want to watch the show from the get go. You know what I mean? I forgot how I convinced her. You know what I mean? I don't even think I did. She just started sitting watching it, and then I watch her more and more. She act like she couldn't see it to the point where all the blood and gore, because she don't like blood and gore and shit. But I'm like, at the end of the day, we gonna see some horrific shit uh, through the power y'all about to me. I'm sure when the, when 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 this trouble comes. So um, also it talks about in the book of um, Micah. Verse six, and I believe it's the point is eight. It says, uh, no, verse 12, Micah six and 12, and it reads, For the rich men thereof are full of violence, and the inhabitants thereof have spoken lies in their tongue, is deceitful in their mouth. So these rich men are full of violence because these motherfuckers profit off of war. And then when you read Ecclesiasticus of the book of Sirach, chapter 10, it talks about as the judge of the city is, so is the people. So if the, these rich men that run this place are wicked as fucking violent, you know, bloodthirsty, because they all about they they're insatiable with their their greed, and just imagine like some of the most biggest profits they make is off a of war. That's why they pushing this shit into a war. You know what I mean? And you know you got these politicians that's you know they meet pocket puppets and in their pocket that's trying to you know, steer this and, you know, do this and do that. But at the end of the day, eventually to get up out of this situation that is, you know, to cover this shit up, they're going to have to go to war. So, um, I'm going to end it with this because this is second Timothy. And this is the point. Um, second Timothy chapter three, verse one, this know also that in the last days, perilous time shall come when you go into perilous. It means, um, uh, no, that ain't what I want. Perilous means 
dangerous, fierce, perilous, difficult. Um, it says, perilous times shall come. Verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, which people are vain, taking selfies, you know, they selfish, covetous, covetous, <laughs> which basically um, greedy, fond of silver, greedy, fond of money, bolsters, proud, <laughs> and because of great pride, you know, uh, many miseries should uh, visit the planet. Blasphemers, you know, um, you got uh, what's that good? Um, Yuval Noah Harari um, talking about we have surpassed the Most High. You know, these people, a lot of these people <coughs> have uh, basically given up on you. How about Shimei Al Shah? Not understanding that the Lord has given them strong delusion because He's the one that's bringing. You know, ultimately the Lord did that to to be able to judge them. You know. Disobedient to parents and brother was going into that at camp. Unthankful, unholy, unholy, unholy. Holy is separate, so unholy, negative particle, wicked. So I don't think that you know. I would have to go into the the um the Greek word. Ano, anoseus. Um, but it says unholy without natural affection. Negative particle of presumed derivative of to cherish affectionately hard hearted. That's the point. So hard hearted. So just like Matthew chapter 24 when it talks because iniquity so like because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax go. So people are gonna be hard hearted. Um truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, mm -hmm. powerless, that's his without self control, incontin incontinency. Meaning lack of self-restraint or lack of control or lawless <laughs> lawlessness. So that matches up with uh second Ezra chapter five that I was going into. Um fierce, fierce, savage, and uh Mirios, savage, fierce, despisers of those that are good, and you know, it's good to uh you know, um, scriptures talk about um, be not weary and well doing. So the labor that we're doing is pleasing unto Yah by Shimei Al Shah, and these people despise that. So you know, they despise us of those, love, and that's why you're gonna have persecutions. So you know, through the Spirit, I'll probably just um, name this of various topics, but um, you know, or or violence increasing on the earth. I know, I, I you know, I, I, your Spirit is leading me. I was going to, you know, I was all over the place to a degree. So, um, but, you know, with the times coming, and as you can see, like I said, <laughs> if you notice our last few videos, it's either been about the these businesses closing or, you know, something happening to somebody. And, and now a few of them is about police officers. So, you know, with that being said, if the Lord could touch these people that are supposed to be in a position of power, how much more so, you know, our people that's at the low uh, this low estate and at the bottom of the society. If you're so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to your power. Y'all about me shot because of the times that's coming. And if not, you will be destroyed. With that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to call Loyam like Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Racha kudas wakatam. I want to say double honors to my apostles, the elders of Great Millstone, who teach and do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom so to the Akwat, as well as the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, which who appear like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say shalom. Till next time I'm able to come with another lesson, I want to say shalom, shalom. And waffle up a ball, shalom.